Well, welcome back to the final episode, episode three. We've been developing our web part together. Now let's look at reading and writing from lists and then testing our web part. Let's dive straight in. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the data. Uh, I want to fetch the data from my list that I've configured to see whether we've already read the message or not. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create an async function. And I'm going to get all the items from the list, and I'll just do them as any for now. Uh, basically, I'm going to get them by the ID of the list, which is our storage list property that our list picker gives us. And I'm going to select the author, which is the created by, the ID, the title, and the name. And I'm also going to choose the title from our list as well. I'm going to expand out the author so we can see all the properties. Just get one of them and I'm going to filter it where the title is equal to the, to the display name. So the created by title is actually the display name and also where the title of the um, row is equal to the document title. So it will basically bring back everything where it will um, where it's this user and it matches that document title. And notice if the length is zero, so we haven't recorded anything yet, then we don't show the message, okay? We do show the message, sorry. So if we haven't actually acknowledged it yet, we do show the message. Now, I also want to do a little function just ready for my property control called onConfigure. Now, what this will do this will be called for our, our little configuration um, patterns and practices uh, control that will show and hide, uh, will actually open the property um, web part. Okay, so a little note I'll put in there that we're using the context of the web part that we're passing through and it opens it up. Now, one other thing I need to put in here is before we can use this um, fetch data, we need to actually do a function that calls it. And I'm going to do this right at the top here. And what this does is I use use effect. So basically, when we first load up, it says if the storage list exists and the storage list isn't equal to blank, then fetch the data. And notice I call this every time the properties change. Okay. So what else do we want to do? I want to set up another function. This is going to be called when we click our checkbox. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna put this in here ready. This is going to be an onChange function. And what I'm gonna say is when we change, when we click the checkbox that we're going to render, then it tells us whether it's checked or not. Well, all we're going to do is we're going to ignore that because once we've checked it, we hide it anyway. So I get the list and by the storage uh, list that we pass through and I just add an item in there where the title is a document title and obviously the created by will be automatically as the context of this user and I make sure that we don't show the message. Now earlier, I got rid of the SAS file but I do want to use the stack tokens. So using um, TypeScript, uh, the library that it gives you there, I'm gonna set up some tokens I can pass through to my stack control where I'm gonna put a little bit of padding in there. Okay. So now the biggie comes along, which is uh, the main function for rendering. Now, the main function for rendering is going to be basically based on if it is configured, then I want to put a stack control in there. Uh, if show message is set to true, then I want to show the message and the, and the uh, checkbox. If not, I want to say um, that you need to configure the list. So we'll show you what, what I mean. So let's put this in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my main function in here. And this is going to return uh, if the web part is configured. Okay, so the first thing it says, is it configured? 
Uh, if so, I'm going to return a stack where the background color is sent to the theme background color from a body. Then I'm going to say if show message is set, then I'm going to return a stack where we're going to set the text color to the uh, theme color. And we're going to make sure it brings our tokens in there. So then we're going to put some text in there, which is showing the uh, acknowledgement message. Then we're going to put some text in there using the large variant for the document title. And then we're going to put our checkbox in there. And because it's uh, a React checkbox, we can pass in the theme variant there. And we're going to put the label on there. And we're going to say on change, call our on change function that we did earlier. Cool. I'm just going to complete the uh, stack on there. And then what I want to do is I want to put in what happens if we, whoops. So I'll close off my stack there. And of course, if we haven't, if we're not showing message, then I want to set the stack style to the text. And this will show the read message because we're not displaying the main message. So it knows that um, it knows not to display it because show message is set to false. Excellent. So let me see what I've done wrong there. We've got a checkbox in there. Then we've got our uh, stack. We've got text, text, checkbox. Got an extra text in there, haven't I? So we need to get rid of that. So that one's fine there. Then we've got a stack in here. Let's get rid of some of these extra bits I've typed in there. So we've got a stack there or we've got a stack there. So that's what it returns. So I'm just going to close off that uh, bracket there. And we also need to say, so we've got our outer stack and we also need to put in our, let's have a look. We've got stack, stack, and we've got uh, our outer stack, which I haven't closed off yet. So let me put that in there. There we are. So I'm just going to format that actually. So it looks a bit neater. Okay, so if a properties are configured, then we want to return that. However, we also want to do something if the properties are not configured, and that show the placeholder. So let me do that now. So we want to say if it isn't configured, then we need to put a placeholder in there, which is this groovy control from uh, Patterns and Practices. And it's got some default settings we need to put in here. So we're going to put the text is going to be configure the web part. I'm going to say, please configure the web part by choosing a list. Uh, the button label is going to be configure. And then on configuration, we're going to call our configure function. If you remember that showed, we click that button, it showed the property pane. Okay. So that looks good, I think, in there. Excellent. I put a colon there. Oh, and the last thing we need to do, of course, is then actually export this function so it can be seen everywhere. So let's type that in. And I do believe that is our web part built. Excellent. So I'm going to do a gulp build and let's see if our errors have gone away. That's okay. We're using fetch data before, and then that's probably good practice, actually. Let's move this function here, and let's move that after it. That's a fair enough warning. Okay, let's try a gulp build again. 
notice it was saying that I was using um, fetch data before I'd actually declared it. So it's quite a nice, uh, nice thing it does there. Warning me against that. It makes nice, neat code. Cool. And now let's try a gulp serve. So we load it in and notice it's asking us to configure the web part. I'll click configure and I'll choose my storage list. Okay, the document title is going to be um, policy, HR policy, and I'm going to use those default settings. Okay, now in reality, I would use this in a kind of a way like, uh, to the right hand side I think like that and notice it responds to the section changes and I would put another web part in here maybe like a file viewer web part now if I put a file viewer web part let's see if it's got a recent uh, document we'll upload a document and let's see what I've got here documents uh, I'm going to put in here uh, something like a chronology document I've got in here. Let's pretend that this was a, um, it's got a chronology in there, okay? Let's pretend that this was really a, um, a, a policy document, okay? So I'm going to do this and I'm gonna preview this document, okay? And actually I'm gonna move this one to this side and this one to this side and then I'm going to preview it and I'm looking at this policy and I'm going to click confirm. And it says you have already acknowledged that you've read this document. When I look at the lists behind here, into storage, you'll notice it's written HR policy. And if I add the column created by, show high columns and I do created by and apply that, it'll be that it was created by me. If I then go back to that page and I refresh it, you'll see that it now says that you've read this document. We got there. It took a while, but it works. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give us a like. And if you like this kind of content, then do make sure you subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss out on a video. And if you want to join us on our developer journey, see the link below. And if you're feeling generous, buy us a coffee. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time. Happy coding. We'll see you next time.